In this tutorial, we're going to look at generating envelopes in Max MSP. The line object, which I have uh, created here, uh, is an MSP object uh, that generates a ramp of values in a line. Uh, we're going to ignore this uh, zero message for the time being uh, and focus on this uh, message, which I'm sending to the line object here. If I send the line object uh, a message that looks like this, uh, the initial zero means that the line uh, will start at zero. The next value uh, after the comma uh, means that the final uh, maximum value of the line will be 200. Uh, and the next value after a space uh, means that it will take 1000 milliseconds, i.e. one second, for the line object to draw a line starting at zero uh, and ending at 200. So over time, uh, the output of the line object would look like this. The line starts at zero and it ends at 200 and it takes a duration of 1000 milliseconds to complete the transition from that initial value through to the end value. Now the point of the line object uh, is that we can use the values it generates uh, from this outlet here to control things. Uh, so for example, if I uh, modify these values so that I uh, draw a line starting at 100, uh, ending at 900 and lasting 1000 milliseconds, uh, we'll leave that value the same, um, I could use the values generated by the line object to control the frequency of a sine wave, for example, by uh, connecting the objects up like so. If I lock the patch and send the message to the line object, we will hear the results. So what we've just heard is a sine wave uh, whose frequency started out at 100 hertz and then rose uh, linearly up to 900 hertz over a period of 1000 milliseconds. Uh, when I sent the zero message to the line object, that immediately set its value to zero, which in turn uh, meant that the cycle object's frequency was also set to zero, which is why uh, we can't hear any sound anymore. Suppose I add uh, another pair of values to the message that I send to the line object. We're now saying, uh, draw a line starting at uh, 100 and then rising to 900 over 1000 milliseconds and then falling back down to 400 over 500 milliseconds which sounds like this. And I could carry on uh, adding pairs of values to that list uh, in this way. With the uh, first value of each pair being the uh, value of the line itself, and the second value being the amount of time taken to reach that new value from the previous value of the line. We could also use the output of the line object to control the amplitude of a signal over time. In the tutorial entitled Digital Audio, we saw how you can modify the amplitude of an audio signal by multiplying it by a number between 0 and 1. Well, this message here uh, allows me to generate a line that starts at 0, increases to a value of 1 over a period of 1000 milliseconds. If I then multiply... the output of the line with the output uh, of a cycle object, a sine wave in other words, uh, and then send the message to the line object, we would expect uh, to hear the amplitude of the sine wave uh, increase from nothing, zero amplitude, 
uh, to maximum over a period of 1,000 milliseconds. And that's what it does. Similarly, uh, if I add further pairs of uh, values to the line, we are now starting at zero, as before, and then ramping up to a value of one over a period of 1,000 milliseconds, back down to 0.5 over 250 milliseconds, sustaining at an amplitude of 0.5 for 500 milliseconds, and then uh, ramping down to zero over 500 milliseconds, which sounds like this. And uh, in doing so, we've just used uh, the line object uh, to create an amplitude envelope with an attack, decay, sustain and release. There is a graphical way to generate those messages uh, that we've just been sending to the line object. Uh, the function widget, which I've uh, created from here, uh, allows you to uh, create the points of a line in a graph uh, by clicking with the mouse, uh, like so, or uh, shift clicking uh, to remove points on the graph. If I then send uh, a bang to the function's inlet by connecting a button to it, uh, the function will output from uh, this outlet here uh, the values in the correct format for a line. Uh, in other words, it will generate the message uh, that we've been typing manually up until now. Uh, I've connected it to the print object uh, here, uh, so in the max window we can see that when I sent uh, the bang message, we uh, started at a value of zero at the start of the graph, which we did. We then increased to a value of one over a period of 202, and so on. So we can see that that's generating uh, a message in the same way that we've been doing uh, manually. If I now uh, hook up this outlet here uh, to the inlet of the line object, uh, because we're multiplying uh, the uh, cycle and line signals, uh, when I generate the message by sending the bang, uh, we will hear an enveloped sine wave, like so. And the envelope that we just heard obviously corresponds with the line that we've drawn on the graph. Now, by default, uh, the vertical range of the function widget uh, is 0 at the bottom to 1 at the top uh, and 1,000 milliseconds along the x-axis. Uh, you can change that, um, those settings, by right-clicking and choosing Inspector from the context menu. Scrolling down, so there uh, is the x-axis value where it says uh, high domain display value uh, and I've left that uh, set to 1000 in this case and here uh, where it says high, uh, low and high display range, uh, I've changed these values to 100 and 1000. Uh, so for this function on the left, uh, the graph goes from 100 at the bottom of the y-axis to 1,000 at the top. So this line, uh, for example, would start at 100 and increase to 1,000 over a period of 1,000 milliseconds. Quickly creating uh, another line object, I could use that line to control the frequency of this sine wave here. If I send the same bang uh, to both function widgets, uh, we'll hear the frequency envelope and the amplitude envelope at the same time when I send this message here. Mm -hmm.